Hey everyone, Koi Poltergeist here, and if you're checking out my channel for the first time, welcome. I mostly use this channel to write and narrate short horror stories that either I write or read other people's short horror stories that I came across online. Now if you're here, I'm guessing you're most likely interested in checking out the uh, interviews that I did of other people who attended HorrorCon VR. I put a whole bunch of links in the description where you can skip to certain people if you want to check out those interviews, but if you're interested in checking out my review of HorrorCon VR, definitely stick around. So yeah, HorrorCon VR. I had the pleasure of attending that back in October, and I had an absolute blast. As a matter of fact, I was so excited about this event. Uh, you may actually notice, for people who've been following my channel for a while, that I actually upgraded from my PNG character that I typically use for narrations. I was so excited about going to this event, I wanted to actually go into Vroid and create my own custom, kind of like VTuber type character. And yeah, it's um, it was harder <laughs> than, <laughs> than I anticipated, but overall I'm happy with the final result. But once I actually got into Horicon, I had a blast. I spent a lot of time just kind of running around and just meeting new people at booths. I got to hang out with friends who I've known in the horror community for a really long time and we mostly just like spent time like goofing off. I actually even took a break from HorrorCon to actually go hang out with Spookaria and some of her friends to do a game and I actually discovered that I'm pretty bad at it. But I had a good time. But having gone to like actual cons before, I gotta say like this whole experience was totally different than what I normally was used to for actual like real life cons. Uh, typically for these type of things, I'm usually going to panels a whole lot. Like that's actually one of the main reasons I like going to cons is like going to physical spaces and listening to speakers talk about like whatever they specialize in. But I didn't really do that that much this year. I mostly hung out at booths and hung out with people, but I did go to a few live streams that I thought were really good. Also, my favorite panel was the Midnight Society panel where I actually got to sit in like an actual like like theater type area, like virtual theater, and get to watch a whole bunch of horror narrators like read either their personal stories or like stories they found online. And you know, it was pretty good. It actually kind of felt like I was actually there in a theater like listening to people talk. And so I'm glad they did that. Also, speaking of people who set stuff up, shout out to whoever came up with that maze. That was a lot of fun. Also, uh, there was a dog in the maze, so yeah, 10 out of 10. Speaking of setups, I gotta say I really love the way the booths were set up. I thought it was so interesting how like they were all set up in a certain way where no booth kind of felt like it was in its own little world. I felt like every single booth had like its own... Uh, it was visually easy to actually see like where everything was at. And because that's one of the biggest issues I found with like actual cons in real life is that a lot of times uh, it's really hard to lay out booths to where everyone gets good foot traffic. A lot of times like when people, you know, because of the space they have or the layout, like you set up a booth and you're basically just in a corner just by yourself. But I actually thought the layout for this one was actually pretty smart. And lastly, uh, one of the most fun things I did um, it was actually really interesting going to a virtual rave. Now, I've gone to real raves before at conventions, and <laughs> honestly, yeah, like a bunch of people dress up like cartoon characters and dancing around. This is exactly what an actual like con rave is like. So yeah, I gotta say they really nailed it. So yeah, overall, I gotta say that I really enjoyed Horicon VR. I thought it was a lot of fun. I got to not only hang out with people that I've known for a while, but got to meet a whole bunch of new people, got to see a bunch of panels, and overall get that con experience that I've been missing for a while. And yes, I am absolutely going to be doing my best to attend next year, so I hope you'll all see me there. Now, without further ado, here are some of the interviews that I got while attending the convention. Oh, nice. Okay. Am I in the right spot? Yeah, you're perfect. Do you, do you want me to, to dance? Oh my god, you don't have to do that. I'm sorry. You gotta take me. What about you? Yeah, yeah Kawhi interview. Yeah. That's, yeah, I need it the whole time. The whole ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> like, I'll be so excited. It's like, but why is Lady flailing her arms around? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. She's just... 
<laughs> and she she's just a very energetic. Oh, I had so much energy at fucking Horicon. I was having so much coffee, and I've I've gone off it, and now I'm just like, oh, I'm off. Yeah, so. Seven thousand and one. So yeah, speaking of which, why don't we just go ahead and like jump right into it? So you can go ahead and tell me uh, what is your All name? Right, what is your name? And uh, what is uh, tell us a little about your channel. Hello, my name is Lady Spookaria, and I am a horror narrator on YouTube. I also write most of my own stories. I have two series that are just uh, custom series. I have the Harper Codex, uh, where my character Jacqueline Harper will go and interview uh, humans who have been targeted by the supernatural or the supernatural themselves. I also have a choose your own adventure um, set in a post-apocalyptic world called Survival in the Wastes. It's coming back, I swear. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still working on all of the background lore for that as well. And I also narrate other people's stories. Do you want to tell me a little bit about uh, Harper Codex? Like, what is... Can you go a bit more detail about that? And um, what got that started? Um, well, this is... It started uh, back in... I think I had the idea for it in 2019. So... The, there's a bird chirping outside. It won't shut up. Anyway. Um, basically, my character Jacqueline Harper will go and interview these beings, and there's a big overarching plot that will be revealed as time goes on. But, um, this bird's chirping and it's annoying you, so sorry. If it makes you feel better, um, I can barely hear it, so you're good. Okay. Thank you. Um, but I was very shy originally about asking people for collabs. Now it's just like, I just sort of romp like, do you want to be part of this story? <laughs> but, uh, before I was very shy about it, so it was my way of sort of encouraging people to reach out to me for more collabs. So I posted on Twitter, hey, I've got this idea, is anyone interested? And there was so much interest in the idea. So many people wanted to be part of it, and I was just like, oh my god, I'm overwhelmed. Um, but... The next episode should be coming out soon, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what I'm really also yeah. interested in is learning about that, like, choose your own adventure thing. Can you tell us, like, a little bit what started that, and uh, maybe why it went on a little bit of hiatus? Um, I wanted to try it out, because I started doing live readings. And I figured, why not give this a go? I sort of mentioned it in one of the live streams, like, hey, is anyone interested in me doing this? And people seemed interested. And I've always sort of loved post-apocalyptic worlds, and I really like enjoy lore and world building, but I also like the chaos of people's decisions. So the first character, Richard, um, they killed Richard. They kept putting him in situations where he would die. I'm like, he's going to die, guys. And he's dead now, guys. <laughs> this is what you guys have done. But um, so now it's following the story of two characters, so Jack and Sarah. So Sarah is the daughter of Richard. And, oh, like, I was... It was very difficult because there were times when people would make choices that I didn't make notes necessarily for or as many notes as I should have, and it was very difficult to come up with ideas on the fly, like, just, like, right away. And I think I, I had a m massive mental block. I was sick and... I just couldn't keep up, and my migraines hit all at once, and it really threw me off. So, unfortunately, I decided to like, take a step back and do a lot of world building and flesh the world out a lot more, and then go into it again. So that will probably be happening next year. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing that drop. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm very excited for it, too. <laughs> uh, but it's also spawned... It will be spawning, like, um, side series, like, lore-based, like, say, this is a settlement of XYZ, um, or more background information on, like, each individual character as time goes on. And so, the Harper Codex actually brought out, um, an ASMR roleplay one, as well as it, there will be a lore series for it as well. So, <laughs> I've gone a little overboard, as you can tell. No, there's a lot. It sounds like there's a lot going on in that series, so I'm looking forward to seeing like all that come together. Hell yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> and I'd like for you to take part if 
sometimes if you're interested. I like. I actually I'm really on the dig. Spot right now. <laughs> no, put me on the spot as much as you want. No, that's the whole point of this community. All right. Are you gonna? Do you want? Wait, wait, wait. Do you want? Do you want to collab with me? Do you? Do you want to collab? <laughs> oh. Sorry. I, maybe. I back away. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, help, help. <laughs> <laughs> no. If, hey, anytime you need a voice actor, I'm more than happy to join on and help you out. Excellent. All right, so for people who are new to your channel, um, if they go to your Twitter and they see that you refer to yourself as the Spooky Nugget Queen Whore, um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you know, for a first-time person visiting your Twitter, that's going to be like, <laughs> I'm gonna need to request some information. <laughs> so, an ex friend gave me that name in order to basically degrade me, and they referred to uh, Lizard Queen ASMR as and no, sorry, Lizard Queen ASMR and Miss Creepy Tales as nothing but my dipping sauces, and were really like, like condescending, like really real dicks about it. Um. So, so I told Liz about it, and Liz just thought it was hilarious, and just just went rant with it and changed her name, and so I had to as well. The spooky part was added for Halloween, because I needed to be Halloweeny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's where it comes from, and I'm going to be making like little, or not, I'm not going to be making it, but I'm going to be commissioning art of a, another piece of art as me as a chicken nugget. I've already got some. <laughs> Art made of me as a chicken nugget because why not no that actually kind of goes into my next question like i've seen you've got like a lot of fan art um the past couple of months i've been following you uh, what is some of your favorite fan art that you've seen oh my god so beautiful nightmare has been doing fan art um for me for quite a while and it's all really cute stuff too which is very different uh this middle one was made by fleshward he made this as fan art uh, this one was commissioned art. Um, these two are both by Fleshwad. Yeah. Oh yeah, Fleshwad is great. Um, like, else? I feel like so many people in the community, like, at, at some point in time have used Fleshwad's art at some point. Oh, definitely. She is absolutely amazing. And she's so sweet, too. I'm so behind, I need to actually commission her. Like, I feel like I'm one of the last, like, horror narrators to actually give her money. I need to jump on that. Do it. Do it. If I could... Hang on. I'm going to point at you. Do it. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> point of shame. <laughs> oh, God. I, I hope she doesn't watch this video as soon as it drops. She's going to message me and be like, where the hell's my money? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> no, she... She'll be like, she does have regular specials and things on. And, yeah. Nice, yeah, because yeah, I've seen like a lot of different fan art by you, um, or for you, uh, aside from like the chicken nugget thing, the penguin thing. Also, been noticing that weird little memes that pop up every now and then on your Discord, which I always enjoy seeing. Like, I'll just leave your Discord for a week, and then like a new meme will pop up. I, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really appreciating I the like the tiny <laughs> hand thing you got going on. I need, I, yeah, I need. <laughs> <laughs> For the, rec <laughs> for the record, I'm going to be putting, like, the art on the video itself so people will know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm going to die laughing when I see it. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. Like, if you have no context to it, it's still fucking funny. <laughs> so, uh, Fright Bear showed me a picture of, like, she was telling me about things where she lives, and they have a... A tumbleweed um, snowman thing. I'm like, oh yeah, she was just showing me pictures. And she showed me this one picture. And the snowman has got these little fucking hands. <laughs> and it's just so funny. And it looks so proud of itself, too. <laughs> it just makes it even more funny. <laughs> and it just has little hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I knew the the meme <laughs> went extreme when I saw people photoshopping the little arms on your drawing. Like I knew that was. <laughs> <laughs> and just oh, and there's the Nicolas Cage animal pictures, and Seven did that for some reason. And they're like, lady, we have you and it's like, leave me alone. <laughs> when I'm live streaming, and I'm like, you know what, I'll put them up. <laughs> we all put, I put them up and we all have a giggle about it. <laughs> you can just imagine some new person coming to check out my channel. And they just must be like, like, oh, live stream. Oh, I'm going to go check her out. And I'm here going, hee 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 hee, little hands. Hee 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 Like, when my narration saw, he stepped forward and I was frightened and this happened. <laughs> Just the comparison. And then the little hands came out from from the closet and pitter pattered him to death. <laughs> it's like I would slap a bitch with my little hands. <laughs> so from that, speaking of what, <laughs> this this is a fun interview. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. <laughs> well, that's. <laughs> Speaking of interviews, I know you like to do live streams, like you mentioned before. Um, recommend, yeah, recommend people go to those early because if you're just like 15 minutes late, about eight different inside jokes have happened. Two people have photoshopped <laughs> images, they're plastered all over the wall, they're, there's a lot going on. Um, if people want to watch mm, you live, true. yeah, people want to just watch you live stream or whatever, um, when do you post them and what kind of live streams do you do? Um, so I do two different types of live streams. So I have one that's, well, at least in my, I'm in Australia, so it's on Monday, but in the US, it's on Sunday. Um, basically, sometimes I interview guests, sometimes I do a live reading. Some, most of the time I'm distracted by memes and Nicolas Cage and Little Hand Snowman. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so... I originally wanted to have like this like proper like show and it just didn't turn out that way. I also um suffer from pretty severe migraines sometimes, so like organizing guests can be hard because sometimes it's like, am I going to be sick or like is it gonna be fine? It's a mystery, it's a gamble. Um So I have those and then I have the nighttime streams, which are usually a little bit smaller. Still very chaotic, but like I don't know, I tend to be able to just talk more. We usually end up talking about food and serial killers for some reason. It just always comes up. I mean, those are two perfectly fine topics that I regularly talk about in real that life. That's true. So you're good. <laughs> so I guess the wrap up... So, uh, oh, oh, sorry, what? So what is your favorite food? <laughs> I, I'm now cross-examining you right now. This is my show now. <laughs> Honestly, my favorite food is burritos. Like, spe Ooh, nice. specifically the big ones. That's my favorite food. Like, it, the, the bigger the burrito, the more I love it. So size matters. Size matters a lot. Yes, size matters for burritos. <laughs> yes. Woo! <laughs> 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 oh my god. I had to use the one of them. <laughs> Finally. I was waiting for your little emojis. Oh, wait, 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 no. Now I have to dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wanted... <laughs> you wanted... <laughs> Are you regretting this? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> you know what? A whole interview video over. No more. We're done. <laughs> Gonna just chuck <laughs> all... <laughs> delete the whole channel. <laughs> just call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, I know. I've had a blast chatting with you. This was a lot of fun. Um, I could tell oh, that yeah. you regularly do this. So, like, and so awesome job. Um, any last things you want to say before we go ahead and wrap up this interview? Um, subscribe to me. Subscribe to Kawhi. Um, make sure you come to Horicon next year and get a booth. Booths are fun. Yeah, actually, one last question. Also, oh, sorry, sorry. Please continue. Also, make sure it's obvious what your booth is, because people just thought I was, like, a lewd comic or something, rather than a YouTube narrator. I mean, 
I mean... What? 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 I mean... What? I'm trying to... Hang on. <laughs> wait, wait. Do I have an angry face now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, I take it. I take everything I said back. You good, horror narrator. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but other, th <laughs> but other than that, other than the confusion, how did you enjoy having a booth at HorrorCon? Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I didn't go to any of the events, but I got to meet a lot of new people. I got to hang out with my friends. Um, that's that's really about it. I got to meet new people. I got to um, dance on Baron's booth, which is always fun. He deserved it. Yep. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I would walk by us, past this booth, I would see like a gang of people just dancing on it, and I see you being the <laughs> the ringleader of it all. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's... And one time, he, poor Baron was there, and he's like, "Lady, no, why?" <laughs> <laughs> That's the one uh, thing that makes a VR, a uh, horror con VR, uh, different than like actual cons in real life. You can't just like get a gang of people and jump on a dude's table and just dance. See, they're just not trying hard. They're not trying hard enough. I'm sure that you would, if you had the will and the passion to do so, you could get up on that booth. No. Dance. Yeah, you're right. Oh. You're, you're right. I, next time, like, an IRL con happens, and if we all get to meet up, we're going to dance on Baron's table in real life. We should do it. <laughs> and, like, let out, like, a loud screech beforehand and be like, to the booth. And Baron be like, wait, what? And we're like, move out of the way, Baron. <laughs> get up on his booth. <laughs> they should have never <laughs> let you off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's filled with so much regret right now. <laughs> oh. <sighs> well, this was fun. I'm glad uh, I got to set up this meeting, and thank you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for agreeing to this. Anytime, anytime. This is <laughs> thank you for having me. This you is usually <laughs> <laughs> this is usually the part where I'm like, hey, I hope you enjoy the rest of the con, but like, it's over. We're just, <laughs> just no, vibe. No, no. The, the real con has just started. We we're the we're the party. Are you, are you trying to get up? Yeah, that's it. Come on, let let. Woo! Oh, too much enthusiasm. All right, let's dance. Come on, come on, dance. There we oh, go. Oh yeah, that's it. Dance. <laughs> 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 well, thank you for helping me start my career as a professional interviewer. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Who else have you interviewed? <laughs> Who else have you interviewed? <laughs> Too many people. None of them have ended this awesomely. Thank you. Well, it's hard being this awesome, but someone has to be. <laughs> no, you've got um, you get a lot of potential as an interviewer. Yes, that's it. Embrace it. Embrace it. I know how to end it. Hold on. Ow. Oh no, he died. Let's see what he's got in his pocket. Oh Christ. <laughs> Not my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> this just looks weird. Well, I can't actually see my body. I just see my hella long legs. Spinning in a circle. I like... Wait, I like how even... In the thing, you're being global issue conscious. You've got like a face mask on. Yeah, I'm stuck. So anyway, I think this is a perfect time to end this. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> wait, ladies. Wait, wait, hold, hold, hold. Oh shit, hold. <laughs> oh no, I fucked up. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang. On. hang on. I can just tell you're up to some bullshit. Why do you always come up to something? Okay. 
I got an incriminating screenshot. We can go. Okay, perfect. <laughs> right. Well, you enjoy the rest. <laughs> this was fun. You enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> you too. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>
if you've gotten to that point yet. Well, th- that hasn't happened yet. Um, we haven't really discussed what we haven't really discussed a lot of what Puppet Master is going to be yet. Um, and I think for the music for Puppet Master, like we got the rights to the music, so we're probably going to use a lot of the uh, original music. But I think also to elaborate on your question, you know, there's been talks about potentially reorchestrating um, some some of the Puppet Master um, music. Uh, uh, so I would recompose something in the same style or, or potentially even like recreate a, a piece, uh, one, one of the songs from Puppet Master just in my own image. Um, so that's those are things that are on the table being thought and discussed about, but we're not ultimately sure, uh, what the final, uh, that final piece will look like as far as the music is concerned. I think, uh, just to add a little bit to that, if I may, is just like, like the game's going to require certain like musical pieces in certain formats that maybe just ripping from the soundtrack won't suffice. And, having Nick construct music more appropriate for what the game needs without having to like cut paste from the original score. Uh, I think it would just be better quality overall to have Nick do original pieces that exactly what the game needs. Uh, but also keeping the spirit of what the original score is, but also we're definitely going to be using like pieces from the original score for sure. Like the theme song and, and all that, uh, because they're so, like, iconic to the franchise that it's kind of something we would be, be it would be, it would be really, it would be, we would miss out a lot if we didn't leverage that. But, yeah, just thought I had that. Yeah, that sounds good. Nice to know that. That sounds really exciting. So, uh, for the other projects that you've done in the past, would you mind, like, talking about them and kind of talk about, like, what the inspiration is for the games you've created in the, in, in the past? So far, uh, the only game we've created is Four Legends. Um, uh, I've we worked on. Well, I made a prototype for Puppet Master in like 2014. That's been out for quite a while, um, and is kind of a rough representation of what the final version is going to be. Uh, very simple, but like uh, the final ver- version isn't going going to be like a it's going to be way more advanced than what you get in that prototype but just more of like a tool to show proof of concept and stuff which is the only really like that and or legends are the only two games october games they ever really made uh until release puppet master then after that it's just kind of like whatever nick and i feel like we should take the studio um but you know horror, horror legends and puppet master we plan to take for like way longer to the future. Yeah, I think. So. I think uh, another point too is um, we've learned a lot from designing horror legends. Like, there's a lot that we've, um, like, for example, you know, there was an iteration of horror legends where when you ran out of stamina with your character, you wouldn't be able to jump, and we learned that having like limiting the player in that way you know, really hurt the gameplay experience. And so, like, we can take these things that we've learned from from making Horror Legends and maybe some of the mistakes we made. Um, you know, in Horror Legends right now, we've actually, you know, we reverted that. So, like, you can jump when you're out of stamina in Horror Legends. But, like, these things that we've learned, we can take them into Puppet Master and, um, you know, really start the ground um, with a much better foundation. Um and that's just one example of many that I can, you know, uh, that I, I could list. But um, that's like the first one that comes to mind as something that's maybe like easily relatable, you know? Yeah, Puppet Master, uh, I feel like is we're, we're going into Puppet Master with our skills sharp as possible uh, with game development after Four Legends. And uh, uh, should we even talk yeah, about like. I- should we even talk about like how, uh, from a programming standpoint, 
we've we've kind of like you know set ourselves up to to utilize a lot of what we have with horror legends into puppet master i mean there's a lot of puppet master and horror legends are going to be they're, they're kind of sister projects or their cousin project however you want to say they're they're very closely related in kind of what type of game they are with big differences in like game modes but like as far as like the mechanics and stuff there's a lot that could be uh shared um but uh yeah we, we just there's a lot of uh things we know that what will work and what will, will not work when it comes to puppet master and to balancing puppet master and all that so um yeah i think uh we're certainly we're certainly excited to start a new with puppet master but also a lot of what learned for legends i think is going to help us start on a really strong foot going into it nice and uh as far as like um if people want to reach out to you like if there are people out there that are interested in helping you design the game either like with making characters or testing the game by being play testers like is there a way to contact you for that sort of thing i would say our discord. discord is probably the best place to get at us on octobergames.com you can go there the discord link is there you could also go onto our steam page our horror legends steam page has our discord link as well you know me and drake are pretty active on our discord and if you send us a you know a private message you know, we always reach out to people, and, um, and so yeah, I think that'd probably be the best way. Yeah. Or you can just send us an email at octobergames at gmail dot com. Octobergamesstudio at gmail dot com is our. You know, if you want to message, like, send us a inquiry that way. That's do that too. Nice night. We also have Twitter and Instagram, uh, Facebook as well. At October Games. Nice. I'm glad to see you guys got plenty of way to contact you if like people want to help. So I guess like one last question I got. What would you say that the uh, Puppet Master team is most excited about for what you've presented to them from like the game you're currently developing? Full Moon? Yeah. Uh, I think they're excited to... I think they're really excited about the prospect of the game in general. Like this is mm-hmm. like the first foray into the gaming world, and uh, I think they're the whole like from what I gathered and when I talked to them, they're they're really excited about getting into that space. Um, after you know we've showed them what we can do, um, and uh, I think they're yeah they're looking forward to it. Could you imagine uh, if you turned the puppets in? But I was gonna say, could you imagine if you turned Full Moon into a gaming studio? I, I think well, you know, it's up to them. I don't think that will happen. I think they're, <laughs> they love movies over there, and uh, they're they're a filmmaking studio. Uh, we'll you know definitely always be willing to help them make make more content for their characters in game form for sure. Um, I, I think we're, you we're never know. I mean, start. yeah, you never you know. know. A, Anything's possible. You never know but... what... Right. The we get we. we certainly you know they're really focused on working on their movies and so uh it's been uh, i'm sure the deal but you know we were had to be really really persistent with calling them all the time and um just really kind of just really being persistent to land that deal and uh um they They've never been into the video game verse at all, and so they're really new in it. So, um, who knows? I mean, anything's possible. Nice. Well, hey, thank you so much for answering all my questions. Uh, are there any last closing statements both of you want to make before we go ahead and wrap up this interview? Uh, play and buy Horror Legends on Steam. Thirty-five <laughs> percent off. There's a free demo you can play, risk-free to you. No risk. How do you get the demo? Help us. The demo you go to the Steam, Steam store, page. store. It's on the Steam page on the right-hand side. There's a button that says "Download Demo," and it's fully compatible with the main game. You can play with your friends with the demo. 
you, you can buy the, the game and tell your friends to go, hey, play this game with me, and uh, it'll work. You get access to one of the killers and one of the survivors in the game, and you can enjoy the game and just try it out. And I guess the other thing is you've got a Halloween event going on right now, which is yeah. is kind of running in tandem with our sale. So I sure think the game's when your like video will come out. <laughs> yeah, the but the game's uh about ten dollars on Steam. It's thirty five percent off. So go buy it. Yeah. Well, nice. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> I'm definitely going to be checking out your game after this. So hey, and I appreciate you so much to let me interview you. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the con. All right, cool. So I got OBS up and running. Uh, go ahead and tell me your name and a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, I'm Sola Selt, and ooh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'll be honest. This is the first time I'm being interviewed. So, uh, <laughs> um, well, I, I suppose yes. I'm an artist. I like to, uh, I like to draw. Um, uh, I uh, well, I mean, I can say a lot of things things about myself but what what kind of things would you like to know cool so tell me uh, tell me what kind of uh, drawings do you like to do well um my favorite thing is where i draw traditionally so like for example i draw with pencil on paper and then i color and add effects in digitally but i also do like you can see this one in the middle here this is pure digital and the uh, drawings on either side, they're both uh, with my favorite technique where I draw traditionally and then nice. color in digitally. That's cool. I also do water, I also do, thank you, I also do watercolors. Um, I, I just, I, I like to do different things with different um, mediums in general. That's nice, and uh, how'd you discover Horicon? How did I what? Uh, how did you discover Horicon? Were you harassed by the, the Oh, uh, good question. How did I? Well, I, I was uh, a booth runner last year as well, but I can't remember how I discovered it. Um, but I did like the idea when i saw oh it's an online convention because you know considering what happened and is happening where lots of conventions uh in real life stopped um which is understandable i thought well when will there be like an online convention and i came across this one and it's like yeah let's sign up for that that's cool and I, I actually you mentioned that like you know I think you said something about how you've done like real life conventions before. Uh, what? Well, yes. Yeah. How would you compare this experience to like this con that you're currently doing now? Oh, very different. Um, I will say with real conventions because I'm, I was also or am also, uh, like as they say, a dealer at those conventions. Um, you usually have. With a lot of conventions, you have a set time when the dealer's den is open. And that's also when people come by. And there's, in that sense, there's more interaction business-wise because people are actually there to see and buy stuff from you. Whereas so far at this convention, it's more like just being here, interacting with people. I haven't yet had any... Um, I might be getting a bit business opportunity but it's not you know as busy as a real convention at least not for me maybe for some other people i think um the thing is also in real life people can see who i really am and maybe talk a bit easier there's the i feel like when it's digital it, it at least it's better than not a convention at all but it's still kind of a little bit of a communication barrier in yeah, some way if that makes sense i know i actually get that like that's actually one of the reasons i tried to make my avatar look like me as much as possible now i'm going to give you the benefit of the cool. doubt and assume you do not look like slender man <laughs> in real life <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not as tall or as 
pale or well i am probably pale but i'm not as <laughs> like ghostly white as this yeah just just a few shades darker it's perfectly fine but no. <laughs> <laughs> i also have hair and wear glasses right now but you know <laughs> But I tell you what, I see like you have like a few links up here for YouTube. Um, I want God. What's that link right there? Is that Twitch or Discord? Oh, oh, that's Twitch on the left. So it's YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and ArtStation, and also my website on the top. Cool. And uh, by any chance, do you do commissions, or is any, or is it like just kind of you just draw whatever, and people can just buy like pre-made stuff? Uh, both. I uh, um, I do have a store, and I do sell pre-made uh, products, like I make figurines and also, for example, badges and other stuff, but I also take commissions, so if you want anything specific in whatever style, you can send me a message. I have Discord, Telegram, well, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, but you can also contact me through the contact form on my website and uh, the more detailed you are the better I know what you want and then I can give you the price and yeah that's how you can commission me and you of course can also order products if you, if you want a product instead well, nice. Hey, you know, I think that's actually a really good note to head off on. Um, do you have any last notes you want to say before we head out? Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> it was very nice that you came by and that you asked for the interview. And if this does turn into a... Like, if you do put this in the video, then I hope anyone who's watching that they've enjoyed. It's all right. Sure. Cool, so let's go ahead and start off like a, what is your name, and tell us a little about yourself. My name is Pinky. I make art. Uh, I do kind of a little bit of everything. Um, I don't really stick in a genre, but I really enjoy ho horror. I love video games, so that's kind of within the realm of most of my content, but I really just enjoy making things. Nice, and how long have you been making stuff? Oof, I, I mean, I've, it's a bit of a cliche, but I've been doing art pretty much since I could pick up a pencil. Um, and then I kind of moved to digital probably around the age of 13, 12, something like that. And I haven't looked back since. And how long have you been sharing your art online? Oof, it's probably been around the same time. Um, it's definitely been over... 10, 15 years now, um, it's, I, wow, I, my, trying to think back, like, it's, it's been such a massive part of my life, I, I honestly can't remember a time when I wasn't doing it. Oh, that's really cool, actually. Um, so, what got you on to come into a VR horror con? Uh, well, I came in last year because my friend has a booth, or she had a booth, and she has one again this year, and I thought, well, maybe we should just do something together. Like, I thought that would be a lot of fun, and I figured since I wanted to kind of put my art out there a bit more, that this would be the perfect way to do it. Oh, who was your friend that introduced you? Uh, it's Drawkill. Uh, her, she has a booth for her webcomic called Die Wonder. I need to go check that out. Thank you for uh, letting me know about that. Yeah, absolutely. She's an incredible artist. I love her so much. What is some art that you've been drawing recently? Like, what are some of your more recent inspirations that you've been working on? Um, so for the month of Halloween, I've been doing some, like, horror movie-inspired pictures, and I've also been doing a lot of art of my friends. Um, I... I think one of my most recent pieces, I did a big collab of all of my friends' characters in Halloween costumes. Um, I 
generally, even when I'm trying to do, like, art maybe from another source of, like, a video game or something, I like to make something kind of spooky, so I kind of implement different little spooky elements into it. Cool, and do you ever, like, do any, like, non-spooky type drawings and, like, you know, what usually inspires those, if ever? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it kind of depends on the mood I'm in, really. Uh, I, I still do, like, regular video game inspired pieces and just characters from media that I really enjoy. I love movies as well, I love TV shows, so if I see a character that really speaks to me and I really connect with, I love to draw them, and then that helps me improve my art because I can look at more references and find something that I can directly draw that source from. Any kind of characters that recently like stood out to you that you've been drawing lately? In private, I've been drawing a lot of Mass Effect. Mass Effect is my favorite video game series of all time, and I've been I kind of keep those a bit private because a lot of the time I draw aliens that I maybe am not the best at, <laughs> um, but it's it's definitely helped a lot with trying to learn different anatomies and trying to get kind of out of my comfort zone. Okay, cool. I'll have to definitely check those out. Oh, wait, actually, yeah, we, absolutely. You, you said that they are private, right? Like, you don't have any uh, alien drawings online, am I mistaken? Some of them are online. Um, I kind of have been back and forth with keeping things private lately and then putting a little bit here and there out just because I've been really trying to hone in my skills a little bit more and <clears throat> work on things like anatomy and coloring and all that and sometimes it can help to post that online and get a little bit of public critique and stuff but it's also just really helpful for me to do that in private and figure out what works for me what doesn't and now last question before we go ahead and wrap it up uh, do you have any art that you're working on right now that you're planning on releasing that you can talk about Ooh, right now um Nothing at the moment. Uh, I am trying to work on a whole, uh, I guess, a, a prep for next year of trying to figure out maybe things I can do with merch, which is a whole new territory I'm going to try to explore. Um, but I think that'll be a lot of fun. You think it like some pinky t-shirts or whatever? Um, I really want to do something like a monthly postcard. I think that would be a lot of fun and have maybe people vote on things to do for the postcards, what people would like to see the most. Um, that, maybe some keychains and things. I don't know. Start small, maybe get a little bit bigger. See what people like. I've not seen the postcard thing done before, but so that actually sounds like a really cool idea. I like that a lot. Yeah, I haven't seen many people do postcards, but I always think it's really nice to be able to just send somebody a letter or even... I think postcards are really nice too because it can act as just a little piece of art that you can hang up on your wall or put somewhere and it's small and convenient and they can be really nice quality as well. No, I totally agree. But hey, you know what? I want to say uh, thank you so much for letting me interview you. Do you have any last last things you want to say before we go ahead and wrap up this interview? I just want to thank you for in interviewing me and coming to talk to me. It's, it's meant a lot and... I've had such a great experience here at HorrorCon, and I've met some really nice people, and I am very thankful to have met you. Awesome. Hey, well, Pinky, I hope you enjoy the rest of your convention. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it as well. All right, cool. So I'm recording awesome. now, so uh, let's go ahead and start. So go ahead and give us your name and tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, well, my name is As the Raven Dreams. Uh, I narrate scary stories. Oh, sorry about that. Of pretty much all variety. Um, I do true scary stories for the most part, but I also narrate fiction stories. Uh, and I also write stories for my channel and other people as well. When I see, like, you know, you got your main website with, like, all of your links. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> AsTheRavenDreams.com uh, has literally access to everything that I'm on, though. As far as, like, uh, picking fictional stories or non-fictional stories, what do you tend to lean more towards? I do more non-fictional just because that's where I started. Uh, personally, I like doing the fiction ones a little bit more just because there's more like emotion and acting involved. So tell me, uh, have you done any like real-life cons before? And if so, like how do they compare to this con? 
I actually have not. Um, nothing like this. The, the only thing I've ever done is I went to Comic-Con uh, in the downtown Kansas City area one year. Um, I think the biggest comparison is, obviously, the real-life ones have a lot more people. Um, this is really fun because it's more easily accessible. So I, I think that's probably the biggest nuance between the two is you're not going to have as many people, but it's more easily accessible to almost anyone who wants to be here. No, I totally get that. Like, I've done a few, like, real-life cons before, and, like, you know, the vibe is definitely different, but... No, it's a lot of fun. Like, there's... It, yeah, it is, for sure. Yeah, like, ac and actually, like, they did a really good job at, like, recreating the booth thing. Like, this actually feels like I'm mm -hmm. going to a booth and talking to people who run them. Yeah, no, this is a good time. I, I, I absolutely love this, and I love this idea, so... So, another question I got for you. Where'd you come up with the name as the Raven Dreams? So, the name of my channel was originally The Raven's Dream, um, and was entirely inspired by The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I very quickly changed it to As the Raven Dreams, because it was an active name instead of just, like, a, a thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's entirely inspired by Poe. So I see you got like several different like links to different like social media that you do. Which one would you say that you're most active on? Uh, I'm most active on Twitter. Uh, I do post things to Instagram semi-frequently, though I use that more for posting stupid memes that I find funny. Are you mostly active on Twitter because you're a bird? That is the most logical <laughs> Don't answer explanation, that. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was my attorney. He seems like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I like to believe so. Nice. So, hey, as far as, like, stories you've been writing, got anything else that you're planning on coming out with? Uh, actually, I, I can take a moment here to plug my attorney, uh, Mr. TDN. Uh, I wrote a story called The Docs recently, and I wrote it for him. So that's actually what's going to be coming out here this Sunday on his platforms. He does mostly just uh, he does audio, though, so, like, Spotify. Um, as for things for myself, not, not really coming up with anything right now. I'm trying, but I also suck at, like, writing things on a good schedule. Nah, being creative on, like, a timely manner is really difficult, so I totally right. don't blame you. It, yeah. <laughs> that story, like I said, he's, he, he does an amazing job, too. So I'm not trying to, like, plug him in my interview, but I absolutely will, because he's a very good friend of mine. So. Oh, no, plug as many people as you want. You can plug... You can plug the whole con. It's all good. <laughs> like, it's your interview, man. <laughs> right on. But no, man, this has been good. Uh, I appreciate you answering my questions. And do you have any last things you want to share before we go ahead and end the interview? Uh, no, just... Yeah. Um, check out my channel. Check out TDN. Check out... Well, I guess I, w I was going to say check out Kawhi's channel, but this is going on your channel, so never mind. Um... It's. I appreciate you interviewing subscribe. me. Subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe. Yeah. That's yeah. a good word. Got to say it all mean like that. Like subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe. And smash that like button. Nice. So, hey, thank you so much for letting me interview you. Um, if you please start off, let's go ahead and start with your name and tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, my name is Imagine Monsavi, and I am basically a multi artist. I I do a lot of things going from digital art to narrations, to singing, to cosplaying, to writing, and so on, really. Okay, I'm excited to interview you because like, I actually think you might be the first cosplayer I've got to interview at this con, so happy about that. Would you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, well, when I was younger and fresh in the creepypasta fan base, I... I kind of, you know, saw people cosplay, and then I found out, like, what's cosplay? <laughs> I was really young at that time, so that's why I didn't really know what cosplay was, and I, I was fresh to the internet either way. And then I started doing it myself. Because I generally, since I was a very tiny, tiny kid, I like to, like, dress up for Halloween, and I was like, oh, but I don't want to wait a year <laughs> uh, to get up and dress up, and then I found out, oh, there's something called cosplay and then like oh yeah now i can just do that <laughs> without it having to be halloween no it's great like the idea that i can just dress up whenever i want as opposed to a single day a year is fantastic yes. you know, like... I, I, i'd like to do that even uh, just going at school like that but obviously um society <laughs> i know right like 
Like, what do you mean I can't dress up like My Hero Academia characters on a daily basis? It's ridiculous. What do you mean <laughs> I cannot just walk in being a tiny Michael Myers? <laughs> ah, I've been kicked out of so many Walmarts for that. But no, like, uh... <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I so see you got, like, a lot of things, so, um... I imagine by any chance you ever go to any cons or anything like that for cosplay? Well, sadly, I live in Germany, actually, and the only conventions that are here are, like, the upper part of Germany, and I live, like, at the bottom in Bavaria, so there are barely any conventions. I was at one when I was 16, but I didn't get the... how it all works with uh, you gotta ha actually have, like, a car or something like that. So my um, old best friend, who actually invited me, didn't tell me about that, and we were just hanging out outside of the building for the entire day. But that was technically my very first convention, and only convention in person, really, because obviously I was last year, uh, last year in VRCon as well. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, that's another thing I really love about VRCon is that you know, for a lot of people. Um, big cons aren't really like an option because like just where we live like I used to live in an area where if I wanted to go to a big con it was a good three hour drive you know and that you know that's not fun so like the fact that like yeah and I mean I'm sorry oh no I was going to say like, you can continue oh uh, well the funny thing is uh, before COVID actually happened the, the, the idea was that there was supposed to be an actual creepypasta convention in real life, and I was, like, really f bummed out because of the fact that I wouldn't be able to just fly over and be there. But then the thing happened, <laughs> and then the idea of VRCon happened, I was like, yeah! <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, what, the COVID is not good, but, like, uh, at least I had some luck with the convention. <laughs> yeah, there were a few decent things that came out of COVID. Uh, as, as horrible as I say, like, things like this, it's like, okay, yes. this is nice. Yeah, me passing the 11th grade was one of them. Nice, nice. That, did COVID help you out that with that somehow? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, good job. Congratulations. Yeah, now I gotta just finish this year. Alright, so aside from that, uh, so I see that you're also a singer. I think I've only interviewed one other singer, yeah. so yeah, tell me about what type of music you write. Oh, I um, haven't started writing my own yet, but I will soon. Uh, I even have some friends that want to um, help me with that. Uh, I, For the beginning, I'm just doing covers, and I also have like a project idea with a non-horror-related character of mine for a... You maybe know the band Gorillaz? Oh yeah, I love them. I have an own character that is basically in that universe, and I have like a project to tell like a story, um, with where where I'm gonna like cover a bunch of songs and have like an image or a tiny yeah, basically a moving image, not the full animation, just a moving image. So yeah, <laughs> it's not horror, but it's just kind of involve a cult <laughs> no that that actually does sound really interesting i actually followed you on twitter uh so i'll definitely be on the lookout for that oh i mean it will take time because as i said i have so many stories i have so many projects i have first i need to get, finish college and then i can finally just sit back and do everything <laughs> no no i totally get that you yeah you definitely do your best that you can and i'll just like keep following you I pretty much believe I have so many things on my plate that I will finish everything, like, <laughs> each year, I think. Uh, I've been there. I totally get that. When I was in school trying to do art as well, it was hellish. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and do this, like, this last question. We're going to go ahead and, like, set up with this last question. Mm -hmm. um, so want to just go ahead and thank you for, like, actually letting me interview you and, like, get to get to know you better so I can share your content do you have any last things you'd want to say before we go ahead and wrap up this interview? Well, all I can say is people can like always check me out. I also have um, 
merchandise that is slowly growing, like of certain creepypasta characters that I have permission from the creators of, where the creators also get uh, a part of the money because I don't really care about the money itself. I actually care about getting my art out there because I would love to see people having like my art as like a sticker or something like that really and anything else i don't bite anyone can always uh hit me up really uh i uh, i like uh, knowing new people and yeah (laughs) well nice well hey thank you so much for letting me interview you and not only do i hope you enjoy the rest of the con but hey i hope you enjoy the rest of halloween Thank you. I hope you do, too. All right. You take care. To start it off, let's go ahead and start with your name and tell us a little bit about yourself and your channel. Hi. I am Dodge. Um, Dodge This 82 is my channel. I do scary gameplays. Well, pretty much any. (laughs) I play anything, really. Um, Mostly indie games. I throw in a couple of AAA games every once in a while, but mostly it's indie games. Um, and I do horror narrations, short scary stories that I find on Reddit. And I do some ASMR type roleplay as well. I'm kind of all over the place. Okay, so it sounds like your channel has like a, a lot of different variety going on. Uh, which would you say you do more of, like gameplay, narration, or art? I would say, well, the art. I'm, I do a lot of art, but it's not on my channel. That would be on my Instagram page. But on the YouTube, I would probably say I do more narrations than scary gameplays. Nice. And hey, what got you into narrations? I always loved to read. Um, that sounds weird. Uh... I used to read bedtime stories to my little brother and sisters, and I would do like all the character voices and, you know, like act it out for them and stuff. It was really fun. So, um, I started off my YouTube channel just doing gameplays, but then I sort of like fell into doing horror narrations when I heard one from uh, Cryotic. And his was really good, so I was like, I should buy this. Why not? Give it a shot. You know, I actually don't think it's too weird to say, like, I like reading. Uh, a lot of people don't, so I actually think that's pretty good that you actually enjoy it. Are there narrators who don't enjoy reading? Why well, is meant like people in general? I see, I see. Yeah, totally. It helps with God. being a narrator. Imagine being a narrator hating reading, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like your life like, would just suck all the time. How? It would always suck. It would just be reading, which I hate, editing, which I hate even more, and then <laughs> and then you eventually post the video. <laughs> I know, right? How um, did you get into it? How did I get into it? Um, why? Yeah. Oh, why? Yeah, so I got into it because um, like I've always found voice acting to be interesting. Like I really got into it, honestly, because... Like, uh, Like, I was into it a little bit, like, prior to 2020, but, like, because I was into acting before and have done, like, short movies and all that Mm -hmm. in the past, but, like, when 2020 happened and, like, pretty much the whole film scene, like, around me just pretty much ceased to exist, I ended up, like, diving deep into voice acting because that was, like, one of the few outlets I could actually do that stuff with. Right, yeah. I didn't know you were into act. Well, obviously I didn't. I just like met you like last week. So <laughs> you're good. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, that's that's another cool thing about like this community is like I'm just constantly meeting people. Mhm. I still get the. I mean, I'm I'm kind of I'm not new to well I'm not new to horror narrating, but I'm new to the horror community, the horror narrating community. So I still get the. You don't know who that is? How do you not know that person? I, I get that all the time, and I feel like I will never not get that. No, it's cool. Like, there's, it's massive, and I will never do that to someone mm-hmm. because I just know how massive it is, and all of our mm-hmm. channels are on different <laughs> sizes and, like, different little communities here and there, because, 
you know, you've yeah. got the the true creepypasta people, or sorry, now you got the true like true story people, the crime people, the fiction people. Yes. Like it's there's so many different like micro communities in this community. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you get the you have the standard people. Like you have the you know what I mean, the standard people you see everywhere. But there's a lot. Wow, there's so many genres, and then you got ASMR, and then you got role playing, and then you got it's it's huge. <laughs> this community is huge. <laughs> right? No, it's crazy and. A while back, I think one of my favorite communities I found was the Rules Horror community, where basically it's a Reddit channel where you have to create uh, horror stories uh, based around a set of rules, or like they have to like the story has involved like a collection of rules, and like I like it because you know sort of like vague, mysterious rules that exist, if presented right, can be kind of unsettling. Oh, like don't go here after a certain hour and make sure you lock your door or like those kinds of stories yeah like you know things like um don't look at the ceiling after midnight and then you're sitting and they don't right, okay they, they don't really explain why and it's like what the fuck is in the ceiling like it's like right <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true like some of them are just like yeah okay right sure but other ones they, they, they really creep you right out i wonder what the difference is is it so yeah those are really cool i know you know and speaking of the community like uh, are th have you collaborated with any other narrators yet for your channel yes i have dang there's i have a couple of there's <laughs> there's a few like narrators that i typically work with because i'm just you know i'm used to their flow i'm they have like their voice is just like i'm gonna try to stop saying like their voice is just uh, it can do so many different things and versatile that's the word and so typically it's the devil's interval interval i usually work with he his his voice is is magic he can do crazy things. I mean, it's and it's not even like so off, you know, out of the. He doesn't do anything ridiculous with it, but it still can be placed in the role of so many different characters. It's it's really great. Um, I usually work with uh, Baron. Oh, Baron. With the Baron. Oh, Baron's great. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm sick of giving him compliments. I'm I've already maxed out my my day's amount of compliments to him. And um Sir Creepington Pasta. I have a couple that I've been trying to get out, but um one with Magnetar and Scream with Me Stories and Gothic. Another one. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get them out there. You know, it's funny going back to that statement of like, how did you not hear about those people? Like, you actually listed off a few people I have not heard of, and I'm gonna have to look them up after this. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, never fails. You just did a uh, an, a collab with Fearsome. What was that like? Oh, yeah, Fearsome Hero. Yeah, her stuff is great. Yeah, um,. She's really, yeah, she is really chill to work with. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> yeah, I just actually decided to change my channel and do more of a, uh, kind of focus more on stories that I write as opposed to stories I found on Reddit. I'm going to see how that goes. I've, I experiment a lot with my channel, honestly. It's all over the place. And, um, but. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah. And I. I wanted to, like, uh, you know, write other characters into my story so I could bring other people on so they can read some lines. Because I think, like, having a little bit of variety and not just be my voice is nice. But no, like, uh, I, I told her before, like, you know, with the character I brought her in, she has what I call the perfect, like, Yandere voice. Like, the crazy psycho, mm -hmm. psycho stalker <laughs> girl. I was like, yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have her in mind? Or was it after you wrote it, you were like... Her, yes. Yes, her. Yeah, she kind of popped in my head, like, while I was writing it. And I was like, 
Mm. Who has like a slightly unsettling voice if she hones into it? And I was like, yeah, it, fearsome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's she's awesome. Also, on a total side note, she actually helped me with VR chat. Um, I just discovered, like, actually started using this thing, like, very, very recently. And, like, so she actually gave me the ropes and taught me how to actually use this platform. Uh, yeah, that's the person. That's the person to do it. They should just have her icon on the logo. She is hardcore. <laughs> I know, right? Yep. I think I saw maybe 30 of her avatars. <laughs> She's a lot. She's... That's the one you, you ask. Okay, so, like, she just, like, dipped her toes into it. Didn't really show you a whole lot. Yeah. Like... <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. I'm sure there were so many more. A lot of variety. Yeah, there really She's were. Fun. Oh, yeah. It was definitely fun. <laughs> oh, also, speaking of collabs, I think I'm... I was looking at your channel. Uh, you collabed with uh, 42 recently, right? Yes, we did a gameplay. Or a gameplay. I haven't had a chance to check the Oh yeah, I haven't had a chance to check that out yet, but it uh Yeah, I need to check out more like gaming videos. That's something like I have not spent a whole lot of time looking at in this community. Though it's fun you watching feel you need to. Yeah, cuz like there's so it's fun watching people who pl you know, are obsessed with horror uh, play scary video games. Like see how they react to it as opposed to like people who don't really watch horror movies or whatever and like they just get hella freaked out yes <clears throat> yes uh <laughs> <laughs> uh i i'm getting flashbacks um i did a da, 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 i did a couple of gameplays with authors with um reddit authors who write horror stories wow that was a mouthful they I was like, I want to see what it's like, because you write horror, and I want to see what you would be like in, like, watching me play a game, uh, watching me play a horror game. Like, are you one of those horror writers that can just write it but can't watch it? Like, can you handle scary games? And they were just, they were, they were awesome about it. I was only able to do two of those, but, yeah, they were really fun. I want to, I want to do that again. No, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I, I the last, like, I don't know if this counts, but uh, well, it doesn't really. I, the last like like scary games I played with people usually I like might play like Among Us with people, not really scary. It right unless of course like you know you do the thing where you turn the lights off and you can't see that far and you're freaking the fuck out like that. <laughs> that's the one moment in the game I'm like, okay, this is actually unsettling. <laughs> when you're walking past someone down the hallway and you're just like walking with your back scraping against the wall, just like, I'm watching you. Don't try anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also another thing that's really unsettling about the game, all the people that care about my life are really good at lying. That's what I discovered they're from the really game. They're really good. Yeah. They're really, really good. Yeah. And I'm not into that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to look at you now. I know, like, you just lied right to my what face. What else have you lied to me about? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that... They're voice actors. It comes naturally. <laughs> yeah, we're just a big old pack of liars. It's ridiculous. <laughs> mm. We're dramatic liars. Yes. I like that. So, i tell you what, we... <sighs> this interview has gone really well, and I've really enjoyed talking with you. Um... I guess to go ahead and kind of wrap this up, do you have any last things you'd like to say before we go ahead and end it? Um, well, I, um, yeah, I mean, my, my channel has a bunch of different things on it. Um, not just gameplays and horror story narrations, but I also narrate posts that I find on Reddit, whether, well, for now, it's just true off my chest Reddit posts, but I'm going to delve into another subreddit as well and I also have a podcast and you can find me on Twitter my podcast is I found it on reddit short stories and my Twitter handle is 82 dodge this if y'all wanted to follow me and a quick question if um, if somebody wanted you to read their story uh, how would they go about how would you recommend they go about contacting you to like share their stuff Assuming you're open to that sort of thing. Right. Uh, 
right now I have like I have a huge backlog of things that I need to finish but if they are open to being patient with me then they can reach out to me on Twitter DM nice. me on Twitter that'd be great well nice hey uh, Dodge thank you so much for letting me interview you and I hope you enjoy the rest of Halloween oh me too man thank you for interviewing me it's been fun of course, have a good day. So, uh, tell us your name and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, my name is Adir Zrihan. I'm from the state of Israel. Oh. A 19 years old who decided to become a horror narrator somehow because I was recommended by a friend of mine to start narrating and it was actually a dream of mine since I was 13 years old at the time I didn't have a good voice and my English wasn't that very good so I gave it some time to to wait and then when the right will come the right time will come I will maybe start it up and my friend came saw me doing something on live and told me so yeah, I decided to redesign my old channel and make it into a horror channel with creepy pastas, classic, new ones, and so many more. Ah, it's actually really cool. I didn't know you were from Israel. Do you, uh, would you say that the horror community is rather large over there? Is it small? What's it like? Well, the horror community in Israel is pretty small at the time of 2013 until... 15 I believe it was actually large because of a few certain youtubers who like two two three youtubers who were famous but it, but then they have stopped out of nowhere so slowly the community went down but two new youtubers or a few others have become in more involved with the community and decided to make more narrations, some from worldwide stories, or some originated in Israel, or some um, um, translated from classic stories. I'm also interested in knowing about your name. Uh, How did you come up with it? Well, before I began narrating, um, my old name was in the community was Mr. Creepy. Yeah, not so original, I know. <laughs> but I thought maybe because I had a character which his name was Mr. Creepy and he was like an original character of mine. So instead of uh, Mr. Creepy, I decided to call him Crips. And also at the time I was fascinated with spaghetti. And I also remembered the meme of who touched my spaghetti. So I've decided to slowly change my name. My name from Mr. Creepy to um, Creep, Creep Spaghetti. No, I like the name change. I think it's actually really fitting. Thank you. Alright, so overall, how did you enjoy uh, your experience at Horrorcon VR? Well, at the first Horrorcon of 2020, I felt actually happy and excited because... I've met so many heroes, idols of mine, who um, I felt so connected to, like Mr. Creepypasta, uh, Madame Macabre, Imagine Monster V, who I've been friends with for a long time, but wanted to still see her on Horacon. And I've met so many incredible people in the community, and it actually felt like home to me. I know sometimes when Dean didn't talk much, it's not their fault, obviously, but... I did feel happy knowing them even though still. I felt very happy to know their stories, to know their inspirations, to know so many things about them. And when I got to meet Mr. Creepypasta, I was so like a fanboy or something like that. And I've been like so holy shit moments and I felt very happy. And in Horrorcon 2021, I had the same feeling, but also a good one because... I was involved also with the narrating of Midnight Society the third day 
and I got to narrate a story from there. And that was uh, stressful but exciting at the same time because that was also the first time I've ever narrated in on live with my actual voice to other people. I did it on Instagram, but to people I know on the YouTube community, that was a little new to me. So that was good. Yeah, it's really intimidating doing stories like live instead of with the, the blessing of editing and <laughs> all that. Yeah. But no, it sounds like you had a good time. Absolutely. Like in 2020, um, after that, I had like um, huge um, not good days or some personal reasons and such that I won't go into, but some tragedies but overall it was overcame and i feel like the horror community in horrorcon or in the youtube community gave me like i said a home made me feel better and ho the horror genre was something that i never thought would be connected to me ever since i was five years old because i ne I always thought I would be like an archaeologist, a secret agent, or, you know, like something that most children would dream of. But at the same time, being a fan of horror is one of the greatest things I have, that, ever, that ever happened to me, and I'm glad it came to my life. I feel the same way, actually. Like, um, it's crazy being a part of this community. I mean, I know, like, right now, like, you know, VC Horcon's over, so it looks like there's no one here. But, like, <laughs> just all the booths alone, it's pretty crazy, like, how many people are involved with it and helping each other out. So, I got two more questions for you. So, um, okay. one more question. Uh, so, let's say someone, you were introducing someone to your channel and you were only able to show them one video or one story of yours that you're particularly proud of, which one would you recommend people checking out? Well, when it comes to my videos, I would highly re recommend my newest, my recent ones, because since I've released the story of Satellite Images narration and Mr. Mix narration until then, these were the best stories I've ever uh, narrated because I bought the ones were with um, my phone, some headphones, microphone, but with my new microphone, I met two good three stories that I'm actually proud of. And when I made satellite images, that was something I never expected to to actually be proud of because I've chose music that will fit the setting, that will fit the ending. That reminded me of my of the old days in Israel with a creepy as a creepy pasta fan, and seeing how I've progressed since 2019 until now, that was insane because at the time I didn't know much about being a narrator. I, I did learn how how to learn to to narrate, but then I didn't know about copywriting. I didn't know about um, legal issues with stories, um, stories being stolen, and many things that narrators and authors are suffering from the from most of the deal. But thanks for thanks to my friends, I have learned so much about it. So it helped me to understand more how, how to be safe when it comes to narrating stories. Of course, if I ever narrate stories. If I, I will either ask an, um, an art of the story or try to reach to them. If not, I will find a different story. If um, it's something classic, I will maybe narrate it. But I'll be safe if it um, won't be that big of an issue. But if it will be a big of an issue, I will handle it like, I'm a, like an adult. Alright, cool. So... Uh, before we go ahead and wrap up this interview, do you have any last things you'd like to say before we go ahead and end it? Well, the last things I want to say is that I want to thank, again, to anyone from Horacon, from Twitter, from Discord, from my internet friends, 
with being my friend since 2019, 2018, and helped me with channel to help me become the person I am right now, and to help me discover my my true path of being a narrator and being a creator, um, editor, and everything more. And I will be happy if if you have time to check out my channel my maybe Twitter or Discord or maybe my Instagram where I post some funny stuff or at the very least I've began in working back on my um, horror characters and their storylines but mostly I will come back sometime in 2022 to narrate again because of um, schedules and such but overall to conclude this I love you all, and I really hope to see you all so many times, even in 2022. This is Creep Spaghetti, and I love you all. So, starting off, um, tell us a little about yourself and tell us what you do. So, my name is Lucid Lupus. Uh, I'm a horror narrator and I'm a voice actor on YouTube. Uh, I'm basically just like a ball of crack. I, I have a lot of energy. I usually do a lot of different voices. Um, overall, I like creating new things and uh, I like helping people with learning new stuff. Is this your first VC horror con? Uh, uh, yeah, I was supposed to go last year, but um, I didn't have a computer at the time that was VR ready. And my, my headset couldn't run it by itself. So this is the first time I came this year. Nice. And what did you think of the experience? Uh, it was. I came here on the last day, so there wasn't a lot of people. A lot of people, but uh, yeah, it was pretty chill. Nice. Uh, any memorable experiences that you had during this time? Uh, I had like a bunch of people recognize me automatically, even though I didn't have a booth. So that was definitely interesting. Your name does stand out. Like I don't. I can't think of any other person who has a name like Lucid Lupus. Yeah, I heard a bunch of people go, Listen! I'm like, ah! <laughs> you actually are jumping back into doing stories and all that, and just yesterday I actually got to enjoy your first live stream. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, it was my, f I, uh, I took about a ninth month, excuse me, nine month hiatus. Uh, a lot of, per I felt burned out, because... I just poured a lot of my time. A lot of my time in quarantine has just consisted of me sitting in a chair for eight hours a day since I couldn't really go outside. So I just spent a lot of that time doing videos and stuff. And then uh, after doing that from like, I want to say like maybe mid-April till December, I, I just didn't really have a life balance either. So 99% of my time was just on my little laptop and I just kind of needed a break. Uh, and I technically came back about in, in September, yeah, September, I want to say. Um, I started making videos again. I didn't really, I thought my channel would kind of die, but it seemed like a lot of people just jumped right back on myself, so that was that was welcoming. And uh, my, my first live stream went better than I expected the other day. Uh, a lot of people showed up, and that, that was really cool. I think live streaming would be a, be, uh, a better way to grow my channel and to um, connect with my audience more. Yeah, I was surprised too. I mean, uh, you had about like 25 people all coming in harassing you. It was great. Yeah, yeah. It took a total of five minutes for a meme to get generated from your live stream. That was impressive. The thing was, it wasn't even intentional. I was just telling, hey, like, hey, you can post the link for people to watch after the stream and stuff. And automatically it was taken at this massive joke that I had no clue was going to happen. Yeah, that's uh, that's Lady Spookaria for you. Oh yeah, no, I I think it's kind of payback though, because I've I've successfully this this just goes to show you how much power I have. Like, for the course of an entire year, I was able to associate her name and her brand with a fucking penguin, <laughs> and, and it's literally one of my gr one of my greatest achievements of all time. Because literally, there's like people she's never even seen before automatically on her live streams. They, they just comment Lady Penguin or the 
post a bunch of penguin emojis and stuff. It's hilarious. It's even gotten to a point where like her YouTube memberships all have like like her like um avatar, but like infused with like a penguin. So it's just like a penguin wearing the corset and a crown. That's it's pretty funny. I've seen some of the fan art before of people making penguin bay spook aria art, and it's fucking golden. So thank you for creating that. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So something I'm kind of curious about with uh, cons you've gone to in the past, like, uh, have you ever gone to any of the cons before, and how would you say they compare to, like, HorrorCon VR? Um, I will have to say that I've been to a few Comic-Cons in real life. Um, I, I say the environment is pretty much very similar. It's very big, very open. There's a lot of people. Um, I'd say it's pretty, pretty close. I mean, I really, I've been playing vr since i was in middle school and seeing how like i don't know i remember when i first played vr this is kind of off topic but on topic too so sorry if i go a little backtrack um when i first played vr i remember it just being a stationary experience you couldn't like move your head all around i couldn't dance or anything you just had like a little joystick that you can move around you couldn't there was no um any any degree of freedom i couldn't move around i couldn't bend down and um, as time went on, you know, just the sense of like depth and scale you get now with these headsets and the fact that you have all this movement freedom and stuff, I think it just kind of enhances the surroundings and stuff. Cause now you can like really like look up, like I can look up at you now in the face and stuff and I can poke you stuff. So I think that's really cool. And I think it just, uh, it's pretty close to the real thing. But yeah, as far as Horrorcon VR goes, um, what do you expect for next year? Do you think maybe you'll be attending, uh -huh. or like what you think the event will be like? Yeah, I definitely think I'll be attending. Um, I don't know. I, hopefully, there'll be a lot more people this year. I know last 2020 it gained a lot of traction, and it was like this big thing. I didn't get the I didn't get the experience it unfortunately for the first time last year. But um, if it's anything like this year, then I definitely think it'll be a lot bigger. Um, I know my good friend uh, MCP. Uh, his booth is over there. I know he he started the event and stuff, and I think uh, yeah, hopefully he'll do it again next year with his team. No, I agree. I hope he does it too because um, like I attended on Friday and Saturday. Actually, I attended like pretty much all three days. Um, even during yeah. Halloween, it was surprisingly popular. There were a bunch of people running around doing stuff. Everybody was live streaming. It was all over the place. Oh, yeah. Saturday, it definitely died down a little bit. I think everyone was just fried from Halloween. Yeah. I know I was. I, I watched multiple live streams. I talked to people all day. I was exhausted. Yeah, on my last day, I was pretty exhausted because, like, I just had so many random people will just come up to me that I have never seen in my life here or on like my channel and stuff and like it's just kind of weird and to go to perspective like for me I don't really consider myself to be a popular creator or anything I'm just I just kind of do my own thing and whatever happens happens uh, like it, it, I didn't really realize how many people know who I am on the in the community and stuff it's really strange because like I'm like oh these people know me and I, I didn't know that yeah, that always throws me off, too, when, like, the handful of people who know I exist are like, Yo, you're existing! Like, uh... Shit, I don't know how to respond to this. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are, like, um... A lot of them are asking, like, Oh, how do how do, how do we get famous? Like, I, I'm not famous. Oh, no. I'm far from it. Uh, so, i tell you what. Um... This has been great interviewing and thank you for kind of giving me like more like feedback of what it was like, like actually participating, not as like a booth owner, but like just a person visiting. Do you have any last yeah. things you'd like to say before we go ahead and wrap this up? Uh, I would like to say that, um, you know, if you are in the community and stuff, one of my biggest things that I wish I would have realized is that it's not really about the numbers or anything. I think it's more so the connections in the people that you meet and then the friends that you'll eventually make um it's it's good to, it's good for quality over quantity is my best thing i'd like to go by but yeah and that is such solid advice because i will say this community is huge it's uh very oh, yeah. easy to get like overwhelmed by 
how many narrators there are, how many like. Uh, even like yeah. people making music for the videos, people who do animations for the videos. I mean, uh, do, people who do like fan art. I mean, like there's so many different avenues you can go in the horror community. Uh, but oh yeah, yeah, just find a and handful if, of people you click yeah. with. And uh, if you want to get popular, I guess I guess you know just kind of post news. Find something that makes you <laughs> that. <laughs> and just find something and be original and you know if you keep if you keep with that and you kind of you know unfortunately you have to like kind of grind to kind of make a small name for yourself i know i definitely had to but pace yourself and don't don't chew more than you can handle you know if if it's meant to happen it'll most definitely happen in time but it's definitely something that's not going to happen overnight i know I was at a point where nobody knew who I was, and now there's like a handful of people that know who I am that I've never even talked to. So it just kind of happens over time. Well, man, that's some really solid advice. I think that's a pretty good note to end it on. Uh, Lou said, thank you so much for taking yeah. the time to chat. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me.